Hi, in today's session we're going to explore some of the things that you need to think about in your third trimester. Let's first take a quick look at some of the practical tips for your home. It's a really good idea to start stocking up your freezer ahead of your baby arriving. Start batch cooking now and freezing small portions that you can quickly defrost for a healthy meal when you're battling sleep deprivation and desperately need some energy. Meals you can eat with one hand are a winner, as you'll probably be bouncing a baby on the other knee. Another co common problem for new parents is having too much to do around the house. A good spring clean is well worth investing some time in before your baby arrives and the sleep deprivation sets in. Then in those early days when you're coming to grips with parenthood, you can take a nap when your baby sleeps rather than worrying about the household chores. Finally, start thinking about what you want in your birth bag. This should be ready to go from about 37 weeks, as this is when you're considered full term in your pregnancy. It is worth packing a bag even if you're planning a home birth as then you have everything you need in one place and should you need to be transferred into hospital for any reason at all, you have everything ready to go. Whilst you will get everything ready for your birth bag yourself, it's a really good idea to ask your birth partner to pack the bag for you as they're the ones who will be rummaging through it during labour, fetching what you need and you definitely won't want to be giving directions. Your birth partner should have their own bag too, as they'll need a few bits like a toothbrush, a change of clothes, and of course a camera or chargers for your phones. To help you avoid packing too much, we've created a free packing list which you can download from our website www.newlifeclasses.com forward slash bounty. Now let's take a look at how to write a birth plan. This is a great way to communicate your birth preferences with the maternity team looking after you. Try to keep it as flexible as possible, explaining what you would like to happen during your labour and the immediate period after the birth of your baby. It can also include specific things the team should know about you or be sensitive towards you in regard to your emotional well-being. Whilst you may have an idea of your perfect birth experience, we recommend thinking about your plan B, C or D too, as babies don't always arrive the way we'd like them to. Taking some time to do this will mentally prepare you and enable you to feel more in control of the decision making throughout your labour. Try not to panic if your maternity team advises you to change your plan. Simply ask questions, explore your options. No decisions will be made without your permission the team is simply working to keep you and your baby safe. Finally, if you have a birth partner, make sure you have discussed your birth preferences with them and understand they understand how to advocate for you during labour, but also recognise that your choices may change in labour and that's completely fine, but they need to know when to support you in your original plan and when to support you with these changes. Download our free Communicating Your Birth Preferences document from www.newlifeclasses.com bounty. It has a pull out birth template and also some handy birth positions that will help you get started on your active birthing. Let's take a look at where you can give birth. These options may vary from town to town, but generally there are four options from you to choose from. If your pregnancy is uncomplicated, you can give birth at home or in a birth centre, which may be located either at the hospital or away from it. In these locations, your care is exclusively run by midwives. If your pregnancy has any complications or you have more complex medical needs, your maternity team will advise you to birth at the hospital in the obstetric unit, also known as delivery suite or the labour ward. This is because the doctors, the obstetricians and anaesthetists are readily available should you need them, although your care is still midwife-led. If your baby needed continuous monitoring during labour or you chose to have an epidural, you will also be on the obstetric unit. You can choose where you want to give birth from any of the hospitals or birth centres that are local to you. It doesn't need to be the closest one to your house. If you prefer an alternative option, go for it. 
So I recommend visiting all of the options available to you so that you can make an informed choice. But also, if you did choose to go to a birth centre or birth at home, and you did need to be transferred into an obstetric unit for any reason, you would have already seen it and therefore know what to expect. Your birth partner plays an essential role in labour. They're your one-stop shop for support, entertainment and advocacy, speaking up for you and asking questions when you need them to. Research shows that women who have good birth support in labour are happier in their birth experience. Your birth partner can be your partner, a relative or a friend, and sometimes you're allowed to, just ask. To get the most out of your birth partner, Make sure they understand the birth process, whether that's attending antenatal classes together or reading the books that you do and chatting about your individual preferences. They need to be able to support you physically and emotionally in labour, helping you to create a safe environment that relaxes you. With this in mind, they should be able to anticipate and be responsive to your needs and of course not take offence if you're a little more direct than normal. My final tip for your birth partner is that they need to look after themselves too. Staying hydrated and well fed, and that means meals, not just sweets and snacks, so that they have the energy to look after you throughout labour, as it can be a really long process. They also need to think about their own coping strategies, as watching a loved one give birth can be a vulnerable experience. The final thing that we're going to take a quick look at today is some of the health matters that you need to be aware of in the third trimester. Firstly, let's talk about your pelvic floor muscles. Now this is the hammock of muscles and ligaments that runs from the very front of your pelvis, your pubic bone, all the way around to the back to your tailbone and basically holds everything in. The main function of these muscles is to help your bladder and bowel control to support the, the weight of your growing baby and to help the birth process. Pregnancy and labour weaken your pelvic floor muscles, so to avoid incontinence and other issues, it's really important for you to regularly exercise them and continue to do so after the birth of your baby to avoid any long-term problems. I recommend downloading the award-winning Squeezy NHS Pelvic Floor app as it will show you how to do the pelvic floor exercises and you can set reminders throughout the day. Another thing that you can start doing from about 36 weeks in pregnancy is perineal massage. Research shows that it can reduce the risk of tears that need stitches and also the need of an episiotomy during labour. So let's be honest, who doesn't want that? There are a few health conditions that can develop in your pregnancy, which can impact your birth choices. So they're worth discussing briefly now so that you're aware of them. The first is preeclampsia, the symptoms of which include high blood pressure and protein in your urine, which your midwife tests for at your antenatal appointments. Excessive swelling known as edema in your legs, your feet, even your hands and your face. Severe migraine-like headaches, visual disturbances, and pain right below your ribs, right at the top of your bump. Contact your midwife if you start experiencing any of these symptoms together. The second is obstetric coleostasis. This is an infection in your liver. The main symptom is feeling itchy without a rash, particularly on the palms of your hands and the soles of your feet. If you're experiencing this, again, contact your midwife. An itchy bump is completely normal. That's due to your skin stretching to accommodate your baby and regular moisturising should help this. The final thing we're going to look at is gestational diabetes, which affects about three to 5% of pregnant women and usually develops in the third trimester and then disappears after the baby is born. It's when your body doesn't produce the right amount of insulin it needs to support your growing baby. So the sugar from your um, food stays in your bloodstream, causing high blood sugar levels. 
Diet and exercise can help you maintain good blood sugar levels, but occasionally you'll need insulin. If you're worried about anything in your pregnancy, contact your midwifery team. They're always happy to hear from you and would rather it turned out to be nothing than something more serious and it not be caught in time. On that note, this is especially true if you notice any change in your baby's movements. Call your midwifery team day or night. Do not wait. That's it for today's session. The next session, we will be exploring early labour and coping strategies. I look forward to seeing you then.